Good morning, everyone. Lovely to see you here this morning. Let us turn to Ephesians chapter 2 and start this morning with this clear theme we're going to have today throughout. And we're going to read one verse from Ephesians chapter 2, and that is verse 10. And I'm reading from the Amplified. For we are God's own handiwork, His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, that we may do those good works which God planned beforehand for us, that we should walk in them, living that life which He prearranged and made ready for us to live. We are God's own handiwork, His workmanship. So let us just pray together, and of course it's an open time of prayer, just as you have it on your heart. Express your heart and just speak to the Lord. So this morning I have a few things here that I'm going to show you. And we're going to talk about a little bit. I need something else too. I need these. Good morning. How are you all doing? Right, so. What is your name, sweetheart? Kayla. Hello, Michaela. Right, so I'm going to show you something. What do you see? Oh, that's very sore. Let me kiss a bit. So, here we have a little bowl, and what do you see on the back there? <coughs> what do you see there? There's some writing, but what does it say, do you think? What is all that writing about? Why is it there? Oh, Katie says so that we can know who made it. Yeah, so we have that one. I have another one here. Look at that. This is... A bowl that um, was given to Danielle, and what does it say on there? Yes. Why do you think so? Why do you think that name is on there? Mm, who gave it to her, but also who made it? Yeah, that's right. Now, what do we have here? We have a picture, and what's going on there in the corner? The name. Whose name? <coughs> of the person who painted the picture. Okay. So, how about this? Um, if I give Katie the paint to paint the picture, Katie, will you put my name under the picture there? What? You're not. Because you painted it. What about if I give her justice? the paint, and the brushes, and the easel, and the canvas. Then she can put my name on there. Why not? Oh, I see. That's very interesting. So you can only put your name on a picture that you have painted. Oh my. Now you know what? This morning, we have a picture here. And of course, we read in Isaiah, Victoria read to us, Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. So now, let's talk about the Lord a little bit. So your life, we'll say, Katie, that your life is a picture. Sarah, your life is a picture. Okay. And a picture that is painted. Okay. Now, we can either have our lives painted by ourselves by using the things that God gives us. Because that's what we do, don't you think? God gives us the paint and the brushes and the canvas or the paper. And then we say, oh, this is great, God, that you've given me. I will now paint the picture. But then who must sign that picture? Exactly. <coughs> Who's that? <coughs> yes. 
It will be yourself. So your life will be signed by your name. This was painted by Katie, or painted by Justice, painted by Jack. Oh, but I did get the paint and the brushes and everything from God, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. But what do you think is wrong with that? <laughs> Who do you think has to paint your picture, the picture of your life? God. Why, honey? Mmm, that's wonderful, hey? <laughs> so I have got this picture for you this morning. There's a blank canvas. And it actually says they're signed by God, painted by God. And there he is in the brushes, and he is the one who must paint the picture. Otherwise, he can't sign it. Yeah, so what I want you to do this morning, I want you to use that space to draw what the Lord has done in your life even up to now. What he's given you, what he's done for you, how he's changed you. You can draw that all there. But it has to be things that the Lord has done. Okay. It was like Olivia this morning. She was talking about what God has done. And she said, not in those words, but she said, My life is signed by God. Why? Because? He paints it. Yes, my honey girl. You're so right. So have you got that? If your life is painted by yourself, it must have your signature. If it's painted by God, it must have, it will have His signature. What do you think God's signature is? What do we mean? If you look at Olivia, what do you think can we say is God's signature? Justice? In her life. Hey, good faith, that's wonderful. <laughs> so can you see the Lord Jesus in Olivia? How? How can you see it? I can see it. How do you think I can see it? Sarah? Uh, because she does things that she thinks the Lord is telling her how to do them. Okay, that's very wonderful. I can see God's signature in Olivia because I can see the Lord Jesus. She's very shiny, Olivia. Have you seen before? She's a very shiny person. Hey? Yes, honey. So this morning I want you to fill into that space there the things that God is doing in your life, not yourself. He doesn't give us the paint and the, and the brushes and so on so that we can go off and paint our own picture. Yes, Sarah? Another way that you can see the face, uh, well, the signature of God and people is the way they created that color of your eyes. That's right, honey. He has actually started the picture. He must also complete it. Okay. So there we go. So, Katie, I'm going to give those pictures to you. And remember what you have to draw there for me, hey? You have to draw what the Lord is doing in your life, what He has given you. Let's pray together. Who wants to pray for us? Is there someone who wants to pray for us? Check. Thanks, Jack. Dear Lord, I thank you for today and the teachings God has told us and that you should paint our lives the mm. way we want it done rather than us going on our own ways with our own ideas. And I pray that um, everyone would have a path ahead of them that you want them to follow. Mm. Amen. Amen. Thanks so much, Jack. So you can go and colour in. And then we'll go on with the adults. Is I'm actually going to take you back to Genesis. I'm going to take you back to Genesis. And over there, I want to share something with you that is in the original language. Is it just too loud up front here, my brother? No, oh, it's just too distracting. <laughs> right, so... Here in Genesis chapter 1, and we find the words again in Genesis chapter 2, in fact, is the beginning for us of this morning's message. And what I want to share with you is that right here in 
Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. <coughs> now, that word created is a God-only word in the Hebrew language. Okay? Bara. It means to create out of nothing. But it's a God-only word in the scriptures. It isn't used in conjunction with man at all, in connection with man. It is a God-only word, and it appears there in Genesis chapter 1. Then the interesting thing is, if you read further <coughs> into Genesis 1 and Genesis 2, the word changes. And two other words are used, which is quite interesting. Yatsar, which means to shape and form, and Asa, which means to accomplish. So it's amazing. Even uh, those who are teaching their children at home, there many of you, keep this in mind, that the Hebrew language says that, for a start, God created out of nothing, and then from the created stuff, He then formed and shaped things. It's not the same word all the way through. But in English, we would just read created, 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 made, made, made. Sometimes they change the word to made in order to try and uh, tell us that the word is different. But there are three words. But bara is a God-only word. Creating out of nothing the stuff out of which the rest then he forms. When it comes to man, it uses again the bara. And the Yatsar, as we saw. But that's the beginning for us. My goodness. So, he not only makes out of nothing, first, creates something out of nothing, but he then goes ahead and shapes the, that stuff that he has made out of nothing. Bara. Very important word. Now, why I took you there to Genesis is because this passage of ours in Isaiah 43 is just extraordinary. Let's go there. Isaiah 43. Now, we read there, or uh, Victoria read to us there, from one, and it was wonderful how the Lord here is speaking about Israel. He says um, in verse 1 there, I, the Lord who created you, who formed you, and so forth. Now there already in the first verse, it's two different words. But let's go to verse 7. Let's go to verse 7. Now in verse 7, we read the following, and this is in the Amplified, but I think it's pretty much the same in your Bibles. Even everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory whom I have formed, whom I have made. Oh wow, what a funny sentence. Why doesn't he just say, whom I created? I mean, it just goes on. And uh, formed and made. Isn't that a weird sentence for you? But you know what? In Isaiah 43 verse 7, all three of the words used in Genesis chapter 1 are used one after the other. So, the first word in Isaiah 43 and verse 7, whom I have created, is the word bara. So it's a, that God only word. Same word used here in Isaiah chapter 43. Okay, then it goes on. Yes, it's a word that in the Old Testament is only connected with Him. It never uses that word when speaking about human activity. Not at all. It's a God only association, it's only used of God. Uh, other words are used of man. But that word, no, only God. So here it is. In our reading in Isaiah 43, wow, uses bara for a start. Then it uses the word 
Yatsar for the next word. And how is that translated? Whom I have formed. Okay, and this of course reminds us of that time, remember when I was chatting to the young ones about uh, how God squeezed Adam out of the, the ground. <laughs> now it's interesting, this word yatsar is used in several places in scripture and basically it, most of the time it's talking about a specific subject. Let's go and read, Jeremiah 18, who's going to find that for me? Ross, maybe you're right here, and of course the, you know, the mic is not too far away for you. Uh, I want to go and show you where the word yatsar is used, and what it means. Uh, Jeremiah 18, verses 1 to 4. Ross, thanks so much. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise, and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought the work on the wheels, and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again, another vessel, and it seemed good for the potter to make it. Here we go. So now the word yatsar is used as the activity of clay, yes, pottery. It's associated with clay. So that shaping is the word yatsar, shaping with clay. So, that's what Isaiah 43 verse 7, the second word is, whom I have formed. So now, keep this in mind, alright, so God says He has created you. Then He formed that which he's cre He created, and He still is forming. Wow, and then the third word of, of Genesis appears in the same sentence, whom I have made. Now that word made is the word asa, which means to accomplish. So if you go in Strong's, you'll see, if you uh, open that particular word, it says asa means to accomplish. Oh wow! In one sentence, in Isaiah 43, we have that you were created, formed, and the word accomplish is also in there. Alright, so give me an idea of how wide the span of those activities would be. How wide or how limited is the scope of those activities? From where to where do they stretch? Lovely. <laughs> yeah. We're basically talking from the beginning right through to the end. Create, form, accomplish. My goodness. Now, here is the interesting thing, and this is where I want to link up with what we shared with the young ones. Because, of course, we saw there at the bottom of every painting, or if you turn the pot, the clay vessel here that I had over, there was a name inscribed on the back. And that painting had a name inscribed there at the bottom. But only because, only because, what a weird thing to do. Why don't you just paint a picture and, you know, hang it up and sell it all? No, but the value lies in that signature, doesn't it? That's what an artist, uh, these art sales houses do first. Look, we have to authenticate this painting. <laughs> is this signature false or is it real? And that will have a huge influence on the value. And it's the same with this. <coughs> what is your painting? Alright, so now just bear with me. Today, of course, Olivia is here with us. And we are soon going to depart for her baptism. But let's together go to Acts chapter 22. Acts 22, and I'm going to read a single verse to you. And the whole thing is going to become clear to you in a moment. So let's go to Acts 22, and I'm going to read verse 16 to you. And of course, this is uh, Paul speaking and really giving his testimony. And uh, he was there. With Ananias, 
Oh, who is the chap he was with? Yes, Ananias, a devout man, came and then he prayed for Paul to receive his sight and so on and so forth. And in verse 15, you will be a witness unto all men of everything that you have seen and heard. And then he says the following, now why do you delay? Rise and be baptized and calling on his name. Wash away your sins. Okay, so here we go. How do we normally, in English, how would we read that calling on his name? If you're calling on the name of the Lord, Heidi, what do you think you're doing? Asking for help. Asking for help. Absolutely. I'm calling on the name of the Lord. How does that sound to you? Ross, what does that sound like to you? Calling on the name of the Lord. Um, to me, it would be like a, a wedding when you take the name. And it's like this ah, now that's very interesting. I think most of us would read that verse and go, Oh, yes, well, I'm calling on your name, please, Lord, Lord. That's calling on the name of the Lord. No, 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 hang on a minute. That Greek word is something completely different. The Greek word in Acts chapter 22 verse 16 is to allow yourself to be surnamed. That's the Greek word. Oh heck, you mean calling myself by his name. Yes, that's what it means. So the, the translation there sort of leads us off in a bit of a wrong direction. I'm calling on the name of the Lord. Hang on, you don't realize what it's saying there. So he says to Paul, arise, be baptized, and prepare to be surnamed by the name of God. Oh, wow. So this morning, Olivia is actually doing this, because here he says, Ananias says to Paul, now rise up, don't delay, and we won't delay much longer, Olivia, and be baptized, calling on the name of the Lord. But that is a very serious thing to do. Why? Well, because of what Petra read to us in Exodus. Don't you think? Remember that? Maybe we want to go back there. Because in Exodus, of course, 20 and verse 7, what does it say? <laughs> Petra is quite ready to read it again. I thought it, it might have burned so into your memory, Petra, that you would just be able to recite it. Let's go read what is there. Now remember, this is what Ananias says to Paul. Go be baptized and call yourself by God's name. Be surnamed by him. As Ross said, isn't that, doesn't that sound like a marriage? That's what, Paddy, your surname was this, and now it's Ep, and... You know, Heidi had another surname, now her surname is this, Ronald, and so forth. Wow, you are surname. <laughs> so, Ronald, you know, your name, yep, is on Anna there. Very interesting. Prepare to be surnamed, but be very careful about taking this name, because here we go, Exodus 20. And verse 7, and you know what? It uses the same word, but the Hebrew version of it. It's not calling on the name of the Lord. Oh Lord, I call out to you. This is what it says in Exodus 20 and verse 7. You shall not use the name of, your, the, name of the Lord your God in vain. That is falsely, profanely. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Oh wow. This thing is very serious indeed to have your name, in, uh, God's name inscribed on your painting. It may not be done in vain. Well, what does it mean in vain, you might ask? And of course the Hebrew there is with emptiness. You may not call on the name of God, call yourself by the name of God with emptiness. How do you explain that now in English? Does that make sense to you? <laughs> Ross says yes, it makes perfect sense to him. Jenny? Okay. Yeah, you may not call yourself by God's name empty. That's incredible. 
Isn't it amazing how it links up with what Olivia is going to do this day? She is calling herself on God's name, taking God's name, being surnamed by God, but only for one reason. And what is that? Because he's living in her. But look how serious it is in Exodus. You may not do this. And unfortunately, I know many who do. And I know many who have. Taken God's name, but it's empty. Now, why do you think there is this prohibition against it? Because there it is, even in the Ten Commandments. Why is it there is this prohibition? You may not do this. Yeah, that's right. Heidi was talking about God's glory. Jenny? Ah, that's, none of the rest can be done. It is the absolute foundation of everything else that has to follow. So when Ananias says, and of course that's why when we baptize Olivia, and also this morning again we pray that the Lord fill her, but in fact we know that it's just a picture that she's going to show us of that which has already occurred. Brother, do you think it connects with 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 27? Just read that to us, Ross. Wherefore, whosoever should eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord, it's talking of communion, but whoever should do that unworthily should be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. That's very interesting. That's very interesting indeed to actually be taking that in vain or, yeah, with nothing there. So now this morning, I want to say to you, Olivia, this taking of God's name, being surnamed by God as the Greek puts it there that is what's going to happen today you know in that situation God is signing his name across your life but only for one reason and that is because it's his handiwork in there remember how we started the service this morning we are God's handiwork and of course in Isaiah 43, yeah, I can see. It's the word create. It's the word shape or form as a potter. It's the word accomplish. There is, it spans everything from start to finish. Three words. Unbelievable. And then this issue of the name. And of course, Olivia is being baptized this morning. But for us, for us, it is extremely important extremely important this morning to consider this issue are we taking on God's name as our own are we naming ourselves by his name but what's going on inside is he there or is he not and if he's not then you need to settle the issue this morning because it's a very very dangerous thing in fact the devil I have seen, in my life, I have seen the devil hone in on the ones who take that name, but it's empty inside. Why does he single them out? Because he can bring great dishonor to God's name in that way. Great dishonor. And therefore, let's take it very seriously this morning. You can only call yourself on his name. If there's not emptiness, if there is in fact his life inside. And take great joy, Olivia, he has created, he's forming, he will also accomplish. <laughs> and therefore, we just live in thankfulness. Lord, it's your work, you are doing it, you will accomplish it. Put your signature on, Lord. It's your picture, not ours. Alright, so let us just spend this bit of time in prayer together.